Our headlines today. Could further strikes be on the cards for schools in England as the sector's latest union asks its members to reject a new pay offer from the government? The new leader of the Scottish National Party, Hamza Youssef, is expected to be elected as Scotland's first minister this afternoon. Stick or twist, good morning as one energy provider offers a deal lower than the government's price guarantee. We'll be asking, could better deals be round the corner? And an opera with a difference will be behind the scenes at a concert composed and performed by people who've experienced homelessness. It's uh, today's newspapers. I'm going to start with The Guardian because the High Court battle that involves Prince Harry and other well-known figures that dominates many of the morning papers. The Guardian focusing on the claims made by the mother of Stephen Lawrence, who says she feels betrayed by the Daily Mail. Uh, associated newspapers who own the paper say it vigorously denies all of the claims. The Times reports that landlords will be able to evict tenants who are disruptive to neighbours under new government plans to tackle antisocial behaviour, something we talked about on the programme yesterday. Yes, the Telegraph says the Governor of the Bank of England has blamed people taking early retirements for the increase in inflation and interest rates. It reports that a shrinking workforce has pushed up prices. And the Mirror has an exclusive with the only Fools and Horses star, Sir David Jason, who says he's found out he's found a daughter he never knew about after 52 years. He tells the paper... To say it was a surprise is an understatement. A lovely picture of them on the front page there. Shall we have a look inside yes. at the papers? And it's really annoying, isn't it, if you buy something and then you find out that it's worth less a oh, little later. Oh, very annoying. Spare a thought, maybe not much sympathy, but a thought for uh, the boss of Twitter, Elon Musk. Uh, so he paid $44 billion. Oh, that's a lot. For Twitter in November of last year. Well, there's a new suggestion this morning that it could be worth less than half of that. Um, according to internal documents, um, basically giving some staff share awards. That values the firm instead at $20 billion, so less than half. Um, but Mr Musk is not too concerned. He says it represents a difficult and painful but clear path to a valuation of 250. So he's got his sights set on something much bigger. Wow. But there's a lot of change going on at Twitter. A lot of people are unhappy with the direction it is taking. because It's changing, find... for sure. Yeah, he sacked a lot of staff. A yeah. lot of the people who might have moderated some of the content on there, they were fired too. Yeah. So a lot of people are saying there's a lot more trolls and a lot more kind of angry discussion on Twitter uh, than maybe it had in the past. Uh, but Mr Musk says that's the only way to run it. He said he knew it was going to be loss-making, but uh, nonetheless, he sacked 7,500 staff and he thinks it's put it on a better track to profitability, but apparently worth less than half. Had um, to lose £20 billion. Yeah. Papers, Let's find out. The I claims turmoil within the SNP has delayed the party's dream of an independent Scotland. While the Express has a different take, leading on comments from Rishi Sunak, who has vowed to fight for the union. The government plans to tackle antisocial behaviour, including giving powers to landlords to evict disruptive tenants more quickly, is on the front of the Times. The Mail also reports on the Prime Minister vowing to crack down on what it calls nuisance staycation party houses. The Guardian focuses on Baroness Doreen Lawrence's claims that the publishers of the Daily Mail hired private investigators to unlawfully get her private information. On the front of the FT, Benjamin Netanyahu's decision to delay those judicial reforms after days, weeks, in fact, of protests in Israel. The Governor of the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, has blamed early retirement for increased interest rates and inflation, so says the Daily Telegraph. And the Only Fools and Horses star Sir David Jason reveals in the Daily Mirror he has met a daughter that he didn't know he had. Well, the Daily Star says experiments are going to be carried out in space to try to tackle Earth's nastiest diseases. Life-saving boffinery. Right, if you want to see any of those front pages again, or indeed read the stories, then do scan the QR code on your screen. So if you've lost 20 billion, what's the thing you really want to do? Run away. Yes. You can run away here on a cruise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at this. This is potentially the world's longest cruise, which is starting off. Of course, most people who go on a cruise might go for maybe two weeks, yep. somewhere really lovely and exotic, yep. perhaps the Caribbean. Yep. This, though, is a three-year cruise round the world. Wow. And it's going to cost 13... Sorry, no. 
137,000 miles, lasts three years, and it's going to cost £73,260. You'll visit 135 countries, 375 destinations. It's a long How time. How much does it cost? Well, £73,260. I think per day, that's, that's not too bad. That's probably quite good value, isn't it? Should we <laughs> go? Oh, my... I'm just not sure. Not three years on a boat. That might... I mean, you've got to hope that the people... I get terribly seasick You've got to hope the people on the ship with you <laughs> are fun and nice people, because to... otherwise that can yeah. be quite... A, I mean, you it's know... It's a long time. Talk about nightmare neighbours. Yes. <laughs> Stuck next to someone you don't like. Yes. It's a long time. A long time on a cruise. Quite the escape, though. Yes. Imagine re-acclimatising to the real world when you come off a three-year cruise. Yes. <laughs> not being a solid land for yes. a start. That's off the battle. Would not work for me, I know that for sure. Mm.